The Core P90TG from Thermaltake sports an open-air design and a prism-shaped body surrounded by 5mm thick tempered glass for a spectacular view from any angle. A trio of compartments house full-size hardware and expansive support for custom water cooling, all of which can be shown off vertically, horizontally, or even on your wall. To learn more, click the link in the description for more info. What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're all doing well. So this is going to be another unboxing video, as you might have guessed from the title, because there are a ton of boxes that are containing different packages and items and components and hardware that uh, I have not seen yet, or I have not unboxed, obviously. I think there's one or two boxes that have already been unboxed by either me or Wifey Sauce, but we'll just pretend that I never saw them. These are things that either I've ordered or vendors have sent me, and I just figured I would share the experience with you guys, because occasionally you like to see me unbox stuff and talk about it. This should also give you an inside scoop as to what kind of projects I'm working on currently or ones that I'll be working on soon in the near future. So with that said, let's just dive right in. Uh, with the first package that I have already kind of unboxed is the X370 Tai Chi motherboard from ASRock. This is gonna be the centerpiece to my upcoming server. I'm actually planning a server build. It's gonna be uh, inside of a desktop tower and uh, it's gonna feature, of course, the X370 chipset, the AM4 platform with a Ryzen CPU. It's gonna actually be a 10 gigabit ethernet video editing server. As you guys know, we've got myself and Wifey Sauce and Chris, the X intern who's still technically kind of with us. Um, we're all sort of working on the same files from day to day and it's really been a pain to sort of transfer files from one system to another and not having something to really back it up with. Um, we don't really have a concrete redundant system so far so that's sort of where this comes in and uh, we're going to be talking much more about the server in the coming weeks so stay tuned for all that. Next up we've got an Amazon box which means I probably ordered it. In here we have oh well look at ah, how how appropriate a Ryzen CPU. This is actually a Ryzen APU, a Ryzen 3 2200G. I did not order this. This is actually something that I told a guy who works in our building to order. And I guess he sent it to me, which makes sense because he's looking for a video playback PC. And I suggested that he go with the 2200G because it's a great bang for the buck system or bang for the buck APU, of course, at $99. And I guess the parts have for that have already started to roll in. We've also got some memory. This is for him as well. Uh, this is a Rip Jaws 5 DDR4. We've got eight gigs here at 2400 speed. I'll probably overclock that for him take it to at least 3000 because memory speeds are very important when it comes to the Zen architecture. So this is going to be a fun little build. It's not going to be very expensive. So those of you who are interested in maybe a super budget oriented gaming PC or something that's just, you know, just for home theater purposes, you might want to check that video out when it finally comes around. Next up, we've got this box that looks like Wifey Sauce has already been into. She's a little raccoon sometimes. Looks like she's resealed it with some duct tape. I forget what's in this one. Ooh, Ripsaw, the Razor Ripsaw. There's a story, a short story behind this. Um, Paul and I have been having some streaming troubles for awesome hardware um, at my place here in the studio. The Blackmagic Intensity Pro capture card that I had been using for years has died. This is what Paul uses right now. It's not his permanent solution, but uh, it has been working out for him. So I, I'm just gonna follow suit because I'm tired of trying to find workarounds for our streaming setup. It's about $155, great for streaming. I like the fact that it's an external card so I can actually bring it along with me when I'm traveling if I need to stream somewhere at an event, for example, CES, things like that. Next up we have, ooh, now this, got, this probably won't interest many of you, but it's gonna really appeal to some of you who are particularly into film. This is the, uh, the small HD 702 bright version seven inch monitor. So um, this is actually for the new FS7 camera from Sony that uh, we recently picked up. And this thing's amazing. Actually, Chris um, brought his in the other day and I knew that I had to have one because the external monitor that I bought initially with the FS7 is just a piece of crap. It's like 300 bucks and I was like, 300 bucks, that's, that's probably gotta be pretty good. It's only a seven inch monitor. No, guys, this thing alone is probably $1,200, $1,300 MSRP. And it's like, you could buy, for that money, you could buy one of those Asus Ultrawides back there. So uh, if you thought gaming PC stuff was expensive, you have not entered the world of film. But this is gonna be uh, really nice. You can actually see LUTs as they're real-time applied to your footage. And uh, there's a lot of other cool features on here that I have yet to explore, but very excited to be using this. It's gonna help our production workflow immensely. Next up we have, oh, more server stuff, I believe. This is from StarTech and it's actually a, I think it's a quad, yeah, four, three and a half inch to three, five and a quarter inch bay adapter. Ugh. So this guy, here we go, has a nice look at it. Um, this is uh, this is our drive bay. This is one of three drive bays that I picked up. 
and they're, they're all gonna be identical. Let me go ahead and get it out of the plastic wrap here. I don't know if I mentioned this, but we're planning to have 12 drives in our 10 gigabit ethernet server. And the case that we're getting does in fact have uh, nine five and a quarter inch bays at the front. So we're gonna be able to fit three of these bad boys in here, which obviously gives us 12 drives. And this is a really nice drive bay. It's the first time I've actually handled one of these. It's full aluminum and a very, very solid weight and feel. I love the fact that it's using SATA power and not Molex. It does have a fan. No idea how noisy it is. Might just leave it unplugged and uh, rely on the case's own cooling if it's too loud, but uh, very happy with the build quality here. This is gonna be a badass server, guys, and it's it's not gonna be cheap either. Of course, it's not gonna be like, you know, LTT status or anything like that, but I'm excited about it. It's gonna be a huge step up from what we're currently working with here. Let's move on to our next box. This is yet another Amazon special. Shout out to Wifey Sauce for blocking out our address on all the packages. Ah, okay, more stuff for our friend in the office. I did advise him to go with an AB350N gaming Wi-Fi motherboard from Gigabyte. It's the one that I've been using for all my APU testing so far. It's obviously got Wi-Fi. It has an M.2 NVMe supported slot on it. More reliable uh, BIOS here than some of the other B350 boards that I've used with these new APUs. Additionally, I told him to get a WD Black PCIe M.2 drive, a 256 model. So this should be a pretty nice combo. This along with the 2200G and the eight gigs of Rip Jaws 5. Let's move on to this. What is this? This is, this is a heavy bastard. You're so heavy. Ooh, oh, I know what this is. I just need to know how to open it. Okay, this is our 10 gigabit ethernet switch from Buffalo for our server. So the way it's gonna work is we'll have our server tower hooked up to this guy. And then from here, we'll be connecting uh, two or three of our PCs, actually three or four of our PCs and it shall be glorious. Now this is a fairly cheap 10 gigabit ethernet switch, all things considered. The great thing is that it's, it's an eight port switch. So it's got eight 10 gigabit ethernet RJ45s. Seems, seems pretty sturdy. Switches be tripping. Okay, we have one more box, but there's also a couple products that I've already unboxed that I still wanted to show you, but they're in the other room. Give me a second to go get them. All right. Here we go. Our friends at Asus sent us over a couple things recently. And the first of which is one of the things I checked out at their booth at CES this year. This is the Blue Cave AC2600 dual band Wi-Fi router. And there is a lot of interesting features about this thing. Of course, it's all smartphone app enabled and things like that. Uh, tons of security features. It's got all these awards, which obviously means it's good. It's a very nice, very compact router. Kind of looks like a Bluetooth speaker, to be honest. Now, I typically don't do many router videos or reviews because the ROI on them just isn't that great, quite frankly. But if you guys have any interest in taking a look at this, let me know. If there's enough demand for it, I just might do a fun video on it and check it out. The next thing they sent me may be of more interest to you. This is the ROI. G Strix Z370G gaming Wi-Fi AC motherboard. And it's the first Z370 board that I've been sent that is actually of the micro ATX form factor. And the fact that it's that it has built-in Wi-Fi for micro ATX is kinda it's it's kind of doing it for me right now. You know what I mean? I really like micro ATX as a form factor for motherboards because it's sort of a nice stopgap between full ATX and mini ITX and the fact that you still get four DIMM slots for, you know, you can expand your memory a bit further there, and two by 16 PCIe slots. So if you want to do multi-GPU setup or have an add-in card, something like that, it uh, gives you a bit more flexibility than your standard mini ITX, but also isn't quite as big or take up as much room in a case as an ATX board. So this is really nice. The heat sinks are, are pretty. I wouldn't say they're built 100% with functionality in mind or thermal dissipation in mind, but they do look nice. It looks like you've got six SATA ports there, one M.2 slot, don't really ever feel the desire to have more than one M.2 slot on a board, unless it's like a high-end board and I'm planning to raid some shit. And then we've got uh, some rear I.O. here for USB 3. Wondering if that's Intel Gigabit LAN, perhaps. PS2 port, some video outs if you want to go the APU route and your Wi-Fi antenna connectors. Beautiful board, very, very nice. I probably won't do, I'll be honest, I probably won't do a dedicated review on just the board, but I might do a build with this thing. I haven't done a micro ATX system build in a while. We've got our last box here. We've got our last package and I've saved the biggest one for last, of course. I also kind of don't know what it is. I have a feeling it's something that I've ordered. Oh, of course. I remember now. Yes, this is a very important piece of tech, ladies and gentlemen, that you guys are gonna love. This is the Nerf Rival Precision Battling Assault Rifle. 
because reasons. I, I, I bought this, this was an impulse buy for Stack Attack. We are gonna be doing one Stack Attack every single month for the rest of the year, and we're trying to up the ante in terms of what kinds of attacks, different punishments, and other crazy things we can throw into the mix to make it more entertaining and fun for you guys. So this was, this was just, I just, I just couldn't help myself. Easy Load Hopper, it contains 100, and, and includes 100 of these foam balls. Maybe they're plastic, I don't know. This thing probably hurts, do you think it hurts? We've got a trigger, that's good, that's good for guns. Tactical rail, and it's, it's, it's battery powered. It's 100, oh, 100 FPS. It gets 100 frames per second. But guys, I'm gonna cut the video off here because if I wait any longer, I'll probably unbox this thing and start shooting everyone in the office because that would be hilarious. But this is all to say we have a ton of new stuff coming up soon, so get subscribed. Check us out on Floatplane so you don't miss anything. You can watch stuff a week early without ads. I'll put a link to that in the description below. You can also toss a like on this video if you enjoyed it. It helps us tremendously. Apart from that, guys, thank you so much for watching. Have a good one, and I'll see y'all in the next video.